How exciting. We have x cubed equals to one. One solution to this is x equals one. Since there's a three in the exponent, that's telling us there are two more solutions to this. There is no real number that could solve this. It ends up being two complex numbers. A complex number has a real part and an imaginary part being summed together. In the imaginary part, i squared equals negative one. So these two are written as complex numbers. This one up here is not. So let's add in the imaginary part. And since there is no imaginary part, it's just plus zero i. Next, let's take an x, y graph. Let's make the x axis the real numbers, the real number line that you're used to. Let's make this y axis the imaginary number line. We now have a way to visualize our complex numbers on a graph. Let's create points for all three of these. We'll have the real part be the x value. So we have the one for the x or the negative one half. And we're going to throw down a comma and the y part will be the imaginary part. So this one has zero for the imaginary. And then the imaginary part here is root three over two. And this one is negative root three over two. So now let's plot our three points. This is where they're located. Looks kind of random, but if we draw a unit circle centered at zero, zero, we can see that these three points cut our circle into three congruent arcs. How cool is that? And if we look at x to the fourth equals one, the solutions for this are one, negative one, i, and negative i. And if we rewrite each of those as points and plot those points, those cut our circle into four equal parts. The solutions to x squared equals one are positive one and negative one. And if we rewrite those as points and plot those points, it cuts our circle into two equal parts. Same thing is true for x to the fifth. Here's the corresponding points for the five complex solutions of x to the fifth equals one. Here they are for x to the sixth equals one, x to the seventh equals one, x to the eighth equals one. Here are the corresponding points for the nine solutions to x to the ninth equals one, and it does cut the circle into nine congruent arcs. And the points for the solutions to x to the 10 equals one also cuts the circle into 10 equal parts. And this will always happen no matter how big your exponent is. How exciting.